In any major city, immigrants run the food industry and they're the reason why we have such diverse eating habits today. We're on our way to meet Demira, who moved to New York three years ago from the Central Asian country of Uzbekistan. She is going to introduce us to Uzbek food, which is pretty amazing because it's influenced by all of the countries that surround it and it's back in the middle of the Silk Road. We are at ANZ International Supermarket. We're gonna go in here, buy a couple of stuff, and then you're just gonna make me some food and just make me fat. Is that yes. it? Yeah, <laughs> right, okay. First, we will buy meat. Okay. And then, then right. we will buy other yeah, stuff. Ah. We need ground beef. Yeah. In our country, our hometown is divided to neighborhoods, and the neighborhood has named Mahala. This is essentially your Mahala. Yes. Butcher, because Mahalla isn't a place, it's yes. a group of people. Here is a, you see bread. Bread is the most important thing on our table. And we use bread for every event. If you are traveling with bread, yes. nothing will happen to you on the way, yes. because bread will save you. All right, so we're here with the mung beans. Can't find it in uh, American stores. We make uh, soups. Uh, named Mashurda, and we make porridge. So this is the cumin that grows in the mountains? Yes, it has a sharp smell. Wow, yeah. that's like hit the back of my brain. Uh, this is the best cumin I've ever smelled. Should we check these out and then uh, we'll head over to your place to start cooking? Yeah. All right, okay. One thing to note about Uzbek food is that unless it's shish kebab, it's rarely eaten outside of the home. Hello. Hello. Today we will do two kinds of dumplings. Okay. We will fry it. It will be like appetizer. Yeah. And we will boil it with sour cream mm -hmm. and with butter. First we will make filling. Mm -hmm. We will uh, puree it in a food processor. Can you press this button? I can do that. <laughs> All right. That's okay. Okay. Now, salt. Some people find this part gross. It's, to me, it's, it feels the best. What are you tasting for? The salt. The salt? Did she put in too much? Like most cuisines, food and custom are both inextricably linked. Barak, a meat dumpling, is often used as a signal for marriage with young couples. The young man will make a double barak and share it with a young lady that he intends to marry. Maybe you will make uh, something spicy. Yes, I have chili pepper. We will make one dumpling spicy and the one person who will choose it will be very happy. So it's kind of like playing Russian roulette with yeah. dumpling. I hope it's me. Uzbek food is kind of like fusion food in its truest form because it takes upon all of the geographical influences around it, each method bringing forth its own Silk Road influence. One dish resembles that of Chinese pot stickers, the other, the Russian pelmeni. The cuisine itself goes far beyond dumplings though. This beautiful crystallized sugar is actually an aphrodisiac that's given as a wedding gift. Dried fruit isn't just eaten with nuts and washed down with tea, it's also included in meals such as this soup, mashurda, that's made from mung beans and dried apricots. Now our food is ready and we are ready to eat. This is the part I've been waiting for. May I try one fried barak? Yeah. I'm very hungry. <laughs> <laughs> He's been waiting this entire time. I really hope I get the spicy one. We will see. <laughs> I've got the spicy one. Oh, yes. you are happy. Okay. Wow. <laughs> I'm fine. That's fine. Great. But I am happy. You're right. <laughs> and how do you like the fried one? It's delicious. Like, I'm just going to keep eating because my mouth is on fire right now. So just... In our country, they say when we eat something new, you have to make wish. Mm. This is for me is a regular food. Yeah. But when I go eat pizza in an uh, Italian yes, uh, restaurant, I make a wish. Would you like bread? Because uh, yes. in our country, uh, every osio. time we eat with bread... Uh, osio, it means uh, meal, water meal. Originally, for this kind of bread, people use only real water meal uh, flour. In this case, name Osio. It's yeah. kind of like finding the wine to go with the, the meal. It's yeah. like finding the bread to go with the meal. The apricot is actually 
Not as weird as you think it would be. There's the dairy of the lavender, there's the dill, there's the different grains, and then you've got something sweet to kind of finish it off with in the form of a dried fruit. After you describing this soup, yeah. such kind of words, mm -hmm. I believe that it's a really great soup. It really, <laughs> really is. Of course it is. I know you mentioned you don't really go to restaurants, but have you tried any Uzbek restaurants here? Yeah. Yeah, you've yeah. been to them? Yeah. Are there any good? Yes, yeah, so they're good. In every area where I live our people, you can find very good food. We were frying yeah. uh, the butter, and you have now boiled it as well. Yeah. Why is this boiled and why is it served as a main dish? Because uh, it has uh, butter and sour cream. It's heavier. Yes, right? it's more okay. heavier yeah. than uh, fried butter. When I came to New York, I, I said I never will cook uh, Uzbek food, I will cook American food. Yeah. And my friend said, Do you yeah? love American food? <laughs> do you know what is American food? What do you mean? They said Chinese food, Italian food, burgers and so on and so on. Now I understood that American food, it is big. Many cultures is inside American food. Yeah. And maybe Uzbek food also will, will be. The first thing that I wanted to say to Americans, I wanted to share my culture and now I have opportunity to do this. Thank you for watching this video and if you like what you saw then please click here to watch some more. These are palmeni, a little bowl of dumplings. The name actually means Ear bread. That's something I learned. I'll put a little sour cream on it. Yeah, these are great. The veal is really tender.